Just for a short moment of your time, I want to talk to these words of preaching. Let's get it together. Okay. All right. All right. 
let's get it together. It has been proven that nursery rhymes have been sung from generation to generation. We have heard them from our parents, and our parents have heard them from their parents. And these songs were beneficial to help us pronounce words. These songs were beneficial to help us comprehend. These songs were beneficial to build our memory skills. However, they weren't only used to teach us about language. They were also used to give us lessons on life. For instance, the itsy bitsy spider <laughs> teaches us that it's hard to reach to the top but never give up. Right. Little Bo Peep teaches us to be prepared to lose things we admire and learn to let them go. Mm. Rain, rain, go away teaches us that it's okay to express how we feel on the inside. Right. Right. One of my favorite nursery rhymes <laughs> is about Humpty Dumpty. Right. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great big fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. And my brothers and sisters, I discovered that all of us have been in that same predicament and position as Humpty Dumpty. I discovered that all of us have been broken. We've all been crushed and shattered into pieces thinking that we couldn't be put back together again. Because when you are broken, you avoid your problems. When you are broken, it's hard to become confident. When you are broken, you give up easily. However, we look at it as being a problem. But in reality, it's not. It's okay to be broken because it allows God to reveal and reshape your life. Amen. It's okay to be broken because it allows God to make you a better person. Amen. It's okay to be broken because it allows God to give you better opportunities. Amen. It's okay to be broken because it allows God to do something greater in your life. Amen. When you got fired from your job, it led you to start your own business. When your significant other walked out on you, when they decided to call it quits, it led you to find the man or woman of your dreams. When you spit and splurged all of your money, it led you to become a good steward and save up your money. When you fell and flunked in school, it led you to do your best to make something out of your life. My brothers and sisters, that's why you shouldn't be ashamed when you're broken. Because everything's happened for a reason and a season. Can I tell you to us, broken things are insufficient and insignificant. But to God, broken things are potential. He sees potential to make you better. Potential to make you stronger. Potential to make you wise. Potential to make you smarter. My brothers and sisters, God won't break the book. Instead, he shakes them to what he wants them to be. But as we walk into the scene and sight of our current text, the prophet Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, is headed somewhere. God has sent him to the potter's house to get a message from the potter and the clay. And it's strange, however, that out of all the things God could have used, he chose to use potter and clay. And my brothers and sisters, I discovered that God can use unusual. All right and unordinary things to do an extraordinary work. Yeah. Because God used Moses and Rod to part the Red Sea. God used the Jordan River to heal Naaman of his leprosy. God used David's stone and slingshot to slay down Goliath. God used the hem of his garment to heal the lady with the 
the issue of blood. And right here in Jeremiah 18, he's going to use the powder and the sword to give Jeremiah a message. And God wanted Jeremiah to get this message and share it with the people of Jesus. God wanted them to know that he was the pot. And Judah was the clay. Now you got to understand, Judah was in the potter's hand. But Judah didn't cooperate. And can I tell you, when the clay doesn't cooperate with the pot, the potter has a choice. Well, to fix it or throw it away. And the nation of Jesus, Judah discovered that when you are broken in the pot of sand, he can put you back together again. But how can how can God put you back together again? Number one, in order to understand how he can put you back together again, you have to understand the productivity of the pot. Yes, the productivity of the pot. Jeremiah has been struck to go down to the potter's house. And he wasn't sitting there to do the work of the potter, but to observe the work of the potter. And as he watches, he sees a potter working with a fine grain and firm earthy material known as clay. He sees a potter working at his will to make a usable vessel. And God wanted him to see just this. However, Jeremiah can see all that a potter had to do. Because before the clay could make it onto the potter's wheel, the clay had to be collected. And the potter would have to collect the clay from the ground. And the clay could come from some soggy areas. The clay could come from some rivers. The clay could come from some lakes and streams and that meant that the clay came from something that was unpleasant and unattractive. That meant that the clay came from somewhere where it was filthy and funky. The clay came from somewhere where it was dark and dirty, but even though it came from something that was disgusting, even though it came from something that was dirty, yes, that did not stop the potter from you. Right. And my brothers and sisters, I came in to tell you that no matter where you are yes, or where you come from, God can use you. Yes. Yeah, you can come from some unlikely places. You can come from some unlikely people. You can come from an unlikely past, and God can use you. There's somebody here that can testify. I don't do what I used to do because God connected me. I don't say what I used to say because God collected me. I don't hang around who I used to hang around because God came and connected me. I won't go down to the juke joint no more because God came and connected me. I don't pick up that gray goose no more. Because God came and collected me. I don't roll up my river no more. Because God came and collected me. He collected me out of dust. And two is marvelous light. After the clay is collected, the clay has to be clean. Now you have to understand that that, that, that uh, a potter's product is already frail and fragile. Mm -hmm. And if dust or dirt was in the clay, mm. the product would become even more prone to break. Mm -hmm. And if the potter did not get the impurities out, My man. the vessel that he made would explode in the furnace. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the clay had to be clean. Oh, right. Now, to our 
human mind. That sounds like the easiest part of the process. However, cleaning the clay can be the most to be the most difficult thing for a potter to do. Because the potter can't get everything out with his bare hands. And if the potter wanted to get the impurities out, he would lay the clay on his table. And he would use his rod. And he would beat the clay until it's clean of its contaminated components. And when he beats the clay, it seems like he's destroyed, but he's developed. It seems like he's pricking it, but in reality, he is developing it. It seems like he is trying to harm it, but in reality, he's trying to heal. And my brothers and sisters, I discovered that God has to do us the same way. Sometimes God has to put us through a cleansing process. Because many of us are walking around as contaminated vessels, but in reality, we have to be cleaned up. So God can use us. Let me tell you, if you come to him dirty, he can clean you. If you come to him bruised, he can clean you. If you come to him stained, he can clean you. No matter the contamination, God can clean you. Can I tell you, when God wants to use you, he'll put you down on his table. Can I tell you, when you are on his table, it doesn't mean you can't be used. But it means he sees something in you that he wants to take out. The songwriter put it like this, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Shine the light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be taken out, Lord, and straighten me, I want to be right. I want to be saved. And I want to be, I want to be But number two, you have to understand the product of the power. Hmm. All right. The product of the power. After the clay is cleaned and collected, hmm. it's ready to go onto the potter's wheel. And the wheels in Jeremiah's day were two stone wheels that were connected by a shaft. And as the potter turned the lower wheel with his foot, the upper wheel revolved smoothly, allowing the potter to make a usable vessel. Right. And when the potter would work with the clay, his hands had to be moist. If his hands were too dry, the clay would crumble. If his hands were too wet, the clay wouldn't form in its proper shape. But although the potter knew how to handle the clay, although the potter had things looking good and he was feeling good, the clay didn't always cooperate. He would notice that the clay was mauled. That means that the clay was ruined. The clay was messed up. The clay was destroyed. The clay was corrupted. But the question is, what does the potter have to do when the clay is mauled? You have to understand that when he would discover that it was mauled, he would squash the clay back down. Squash it back down to nothing and start all over again. Right. And my brothers and sisters, what the potter did seemed like it was bad. But in reality, it was good because he had to break the clay in order to make it better. And my brothers and sisters, I discovered that sometimes in our lives, God has to break us 
us Amen. in order to better us. Amen. You wonder why you got fired from one job and got laid off of the next job. God had to break you in order to better you. All right. You wonder why after one family member passed away, another one passed away. God had to break you yes. in order to better you. You wonder why I moved from stage one castle to stage two castle. God had to break you in order to better you. Amen. You wonder after one relationship failed, another one had failed. God had to break you in order to better you. And my brothers and sisters, whatever seems to be ruined, you, you, you got to understand God can reshape it. God can rebuild it. God can reconstruct it. God can rearrange it Man. for his glory. Yeah. That's why I discovered that you have to thank God yes. yeah. for the destruction and devastation. Amen. You ought to thank God for the trials and tribulations. Yeah. You ought to thank God for the good times and the bad times because whatever seems to be real, God uses it as an opportunity to bend. But after he fixes the problem, after he starts all over again, he forms it into a usable vessel. And when he gets the clay to where he wants it to be, he puts the clay on his shelf so it can dry. And once the clay is dry, He'll take the vessel that he made and he'll put it in the furnace. All right. yeah. My brothers and sisters, I realize sometimes God has to put us in the furnace. And you got to understand when he puts you there, he doesn't put you there because you've done something wrong. But he puts you there to get you to where he wants you to be. And my brothers and sisters, can I tell you, I don't mind God putting me through the fire. Lord, you can burn me. You can melt me. You can put me through the fire in order to get me to where you want me to be. So I'm ready to put it like this. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when he gets through with me, I shall come forth yes. as pure gold. Number <laughs> one, you have to understand the productivity of the power. Number two, you have to understand the product of the power. <laughs> but lastly, you have to understand the perspective to take from the power. Bye bye. After the vessel was complete, after God had gave Jeremiah the message that he needed, God illustrated his relationship with his people. And God sent Jeremiah to the potter's house to tell Judah that he has power over them. And my brothers and sisters, I discovered that wickedness didn't allow Judah to be what God wanted them to be. Sinfulness didn't allow Judah to be what God wanted them to be. And God wanted Jeremiah to understand that he didn't want to throw Judah away. But uh, I discovered that Judah wanted to be the pot, and they didn't want to be the clay. The nation of Judah uh, had a Burger King mentality, and they wanted things done that way. Have I got a win? And I discovered that clay cannot collect itself. 
Clay cannot clean itself. Clay cannot configure itself. But the work had to be done by the power. Have I got a witness? And I discovered that God can take the unlikely. Yes, sir. And he can use them. God can take the unclean. And he can clean them. Have I got a witness? Yes, sir. God can take the mall. Yeah, yeah. And he can mend them. Yes, sir. And I discovered that no matter how we get some time, yeah. God can work on us. Yeah. No matter how we forget God some time, uh, he can work on us. Have I got a witness? And can I tell you that if you are messed up, you're still in the potter's hand? And can I tell you that I'm so glad that I'm in the potter's hand? Have I got a witness? But the Bible tells me, but he who is in his hands, no man can pluck you out. And can I tell you that when you are in the potter's hand, he can mold and make you. When you are in the potter's hand, he can reshape and rearrange you. When you are in the potter's hand, he can build and better you. When you are in the potter's hand, he can make something out of nothing. When you are in the potter's hand, he can work on you until you get to where he wants you to be. Have I got a witness? And I'm so glad that God put me on a potter's wheel. I'm so glad that God worked on me. I'm so glad that God shaped me. And I'm glad because I'm not what I used to be. Ain't the Lord all right. The songwriter said, in case you are falling by the wayside of life, dreams and visions shattered, you are broken inside. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in because the part of wolves the potter wants to put you back together again. And Lord, work on me. Put me on the construction. Do what you have to do to make me pleasing unto you. Ain't he all right? Say yeah. 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 Shallow. You can put you back together again. Let's get it together. Let's get to where God wants us to be. And let me tell you that over 2,000 years ago, he reshaped and rearranged us. They marched him up on God got this mountain. They nailed him in his hand and nailed him in his feet. And they pissed him in his side and they put a crown of thorns on his head. And you got to understand that there were two thieves there beside him. One of them said, if you be who you say you are, come on down and save yourself. But the other thief said, Lord, when you enter into thy kingdom, please remember me. He died hung his head and the locks of his shoulder. He died. Is there anybody here that know he died? He stayed there all night Friday. Stayed there all night Saturday. But early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up before the rooster crowed. He got
Let's get it. Let's get it. To get it. You don't have to stay in the shape that you eat. Because the power wants to put you back together again. My brothers and sisters, can I tell you, when God puts you through the fire, yes, Lord. when you are where God wants you to be, yes. get ready to be used. Yes. You got to understand, God don't want no curio cabinet Christians. Yes. He don't want no Christians that sit around acting like they're all of that in a bag of chips. Yes. He wants some folks that are willing yes. to be used yes. by him. Yes. 